area has good tsunami defenses. The residents are well prepared. They should. Tsunami drills are a regular feature of life. Everyone knows what to do when the sirens sound. We're not yet relieving. Where do we go? Go to the hill. On March 11, the sirens sound. The tsunami is minutes away. There's a hill outside of town that we're uh, going to try to get to. Confusion rules. Some search for high ground. Some aren't sure what to do. Uh, it was a cautionary measure, but, uh, I mean, you know, you never know. This, this uh, town has a lot of history with tsunamis and a lot of death from it, so they're taking it pretty seriously, obviously. Uh, the warning saves the lives of some. Here it comes! defense wall, but the ground has sunk several feet. The wave smashes over the wall and floods the diesel generators cooling the reactor core. Japan is part of the global defense of the tsunami. Japan has a long uh, its shoreline of tsunami wall, and this a wave of water was several times that height and just blew right there. The payphone goes down, so do all their power in place. And if they have a gigantic wave coming in, them, it's going to short out everything electrical. Backup batteries take over to keep the pumps going. Batteries with just an eight-hour charge. The tsunami's destructive march inland overwhelms seawalls, erases whole towns, and sets Japan on the path to a nuclear crisis. And it isn't over yet. Now, all that water pulls back out to sea. Huge 
always talks about the way he, he treats and drives the every place on the land, the cars, the lorries, the buses, the trains, the, the buildings, the people. And so they're sucked back out into the ocean. From miles offshore, the ocean is a churning mass of currents. Huge whirlpools form. Boats like this are no match for its power. Sadly, the main help is within dry out to sea. Um, I suspect, practically, they're going to find bodies washing up along the coast of Japan for some months to come. During the night, fires rage across the wasteland. Oil from factories and natural gas from ruptured lines set hundreds of square miles of debris on fire. In Tokyo, the train system is paralyzed. Millions sleep in offices and wait for dawn. Eight hours after the quake, the tsunami wave continues to spread across the ocean. Countries all around the Pacific Rim watch nervously. In Hawaii, the Tsunami Warning Center is on full alert. Very quickly, we realized that, that this, was, this was basically the first big ocean crossing tsunami um, that had happened in 40 years. Will the tsunami hit Hawaii? If so, when? And how big will it be? Readings from deep ocean sensors suggest the wave is up to three feet high. Now that is monstrous on the, on the deep ocean for a tsunami to be that big. And uh, at that point we went to a Pacific wide warning, which means another message. And now lots and lots of phone calls. Hawaii issues an evacuation alert. People head for higher ground. The wave hits Hawaii. As predicted, it's three feet high. For more than an hour, it surges over the island.
Ten hours later and over 5,000 miles from the quake, the tsunami, now smaller and weaker, finally hits California. The wave still creates havoc along the coast. There, so the Pacific Coast is focused on waves. So although there's only one major wire, it must continue to see places like the Crescent City in California. Um, and again, because people were born, there was very little destruction and damage, so much as human life. One person did lose their life, their life uh, in, in California, not because of death, because they rushed down to the beach to take photos of the tsunamis that came out. Back in Japan, the crisis continues to escalate. Different locations suffer different effects. Veteran journalist Callum McRae sets off along the coast to discover how far-reaching the tsunami damage is. This is the isolated mountain community of Kahoku. Thank you. 